What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for February 21st, 2023. It is Tuesday, so time for a little bit of a motivational slash inspirational quick couple minutes. And this one is basically on me. And I've been reflecting a lot. Maybe it's a midlife crisis. I don't know. I'm 44. If I can get to 88, I, I, I would take it. But just with a lot of things going on in my job, uh, what I do for my, my day job, quote unquote, um, just I've lost a lot of the passion I used to have with education. And this is in no way something about the per- people I work for or anything like that. Just like any job, there there's pros and cons and there's stuff I agree with and don't agree with. It's just the overall state of education. Don't really want to get into all of that and, and turn it into a political thing, but I'd be more than happy to debate any of you um, about the, the educational system and, and what needs to be done. But enough about that. But it's more about this podcast and just taking control of your life and, and doing what you love. Life is too short. Um, and I, I believe everything happens for a reason. So I'm not saying I'm not leaving education. So don't don't think that. But I believe everything kind of happens for a reason. I feel like I was meant to to work in the grocery business out of college. Uh, it was a very humbling experience because of how I was thinking and, and just the the arrogance I guess I had. So it was good to get me knocked down a couple pegs and, and having to actually do something where I had to work hard and not have something handed to me. Went back to school, blah, 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 blah. I, I was meant to go and work for people for people. I met a lot of great people there, then Agora and all this. But I, I feel as though it, it life is too short to not be happy in what you do, which is why I've started this podcast. And I just never really had um, – going back to, I guess – always never got rid of the dream I had as a kid is to do something like this, be in front of a camera, talking, talking about sports, no less. And it's just my message for everyone today is make, do something you love, whether it's a hobby or whatever. I don't know if this is ever going to turn into something more than a hobby, but if it helps me get through the next 16 years of my work life until I can retire, great. If it turns into something where this becomes my full-time job, even better. Uh, what, what kind of led to this was I had a couple meetings yesterday on my day off and about the podcast and, and they were positive and hopefully it's going to lead to some good things moving forward in the future um, as far as better quality, uh, maybe getting some sponsors, some um, teaming up with some other local podcasters. So it was definitely a good thing. So I have some good things, but my message today is just be sure to do something you love. Life is too short. And if you, you've been putting something off, whether it's taking a trip, reading a book, running a race, uh, doing something, do it. And, and like I said, it might sound cheesy, but if you're listening to this, I appreciate you because you're helping me with my dreams and, and doing what I want. So thank you for that. With that being said, let's get into today's Philly Sports Black History Spotlight. And in honor of spring training, we're going to go to Negro League Baseball. And we're going to spotlight the Philadelphia Stars today, who, for me, they're they're probably the most famous of the Negro League teams that played in Philly. There's a lot, and I'm going to cover um, some of them in the next few days. But the Philadelphia Stars are probably the most popular, most prominent. They were founded in 1933. Uh, they were started off as an independent team, and then they played in the Negro National League. After that folded, the Negro American League. Um, interesting, they played on Passan Field, which was West Philadelphia's high school uh, facilities. Then they moved to 44th and Parkside for most of their existence, and I can picture exactly where that area is uh, just from different taking shortcuts and taking kids home from school and things like that. Um, and then the, before they folded, once the major league started integrating, they did play a few years down in Wilmington where the Blue Rocks play now. Um, so they went 1933 to 1952. And again, part of the, the downfall of the Negro Leagues was more of Major League Baseball integrating. Um, and it just... It was a slow process, and we've talked a lot about that. But they uh, folded in 1952. They did win a championship in 1934. So technically, they were the first of the pro teams in Philly to win win a championship, unless you count the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets. Um, but for the 
for the sake of this podcast, we'll count the, the Philadelphia Stars championship as the first. Um, they had a lot of Hall of Fame players that played for them. None of them are inducted into the Hall of Fame as a Philadelphia Star. But I want to make sure their names and they get shouted out. These guys played for the Philadelphia Stars. Oscar, Oscar Charleston, Biz Mackey, Satchel Paige, Turkey Stearns, and Judd Wilson. Uh, like I said, I want to make sure their names get out there. You guys know. Look them up. I know a lot of people know about Satchel Paige, but look those other guys up because as I was looking through, like some of their stories are phenomenal. Um, so I highly recommend that. But today we spotlight the Philadelphia Stars for their contribution to not only the Negro Leagues, but the city of Philadelphia and, and providing uh, the citizen, black citizens of Philadelphia uh, a chance to, to go watch baseball with people that look like them. All right, the Flyers beat the Flames yesterday 4-3. to three. It was kind of a gritty win for them. They were shorthanded. Uh, I did watch some of this. Um, maybe the, maybe we were wrong in the beginning of the season hoping for, for the draft picks. Obviously, we know we, we need some players, but the young guys that are there, Tortorella seems to be really getting a lot out of them. So worth something worth keeping an eye on. I don't think they're, the, they're going to be in a playoff team, um, kind of stuck in that purgatory, but... If those young guys are going to learn and, and get some of those experiences, I guess it's worthwhile. Um, they are in action tonight in Edmonton. Uh, quick Philly story. Uh, I read, saw something about Castellanos, and, and I know um, we're not quite ready for the Phillies preview yet, but something I mentioned at the end of uh, last year uh, when I did the New Year's Christmas uh, special for Back to the Future and I think he's going to be settled down. And he talked about it. he was trying to do too much with his swing. He simplified things a little bit. So hopefully he's going to get back to the player he was. Um, and that's what we're hoping for. Uh, Eagles update. They interviewed Jim Leonard, uh, who was the old Wisconsin um, defensive coordinator for their defensive coordinator spot. Vance Joseph is coming in on Wednesday. Uh, virtually, I should say, coming in for an interview. So it looks like they are looking at people outside of the building, which kind of is a good thing. Um, so we'll kind of keep monitoring that. And I don't know if they're just doing lip service or what, but, uh, something to keep an eye on, but let's take it back to 1988 today. And on this day, February 21st, 1988, the number one temple owls took on the number five UNC Tar Heels down in Chapel Hill and the temple defense just suffocated them. Temple rolled away with it 83 to 66 uh they were down 39 34 and half and then just dominated in the second half uh mike vrieswick had 26 points yeah he hit 5 at 11 from three point range mark macon had 19 this team was just stacked they had four guys that would play in the nba mark macon tim perry ramon rivas and Dwayne coswell this was the first of cheney's five elite eights they went into the tournament number one, and it was probably the best team of any of his Elite Eight teams. Um, they lost to a Duke, up-and-coming Duke team at that point uh, to go to the Final Four, but uh, they were a very, very good team. So I would say I would rank them obviously number one of the five John Cheney Elite Eight teams. I still say, and and probably because I'm so close to it and and they meant so much to me, that 99-2000 team probably was his best chance to get to the Final Four because of the way the bracket rolled out. But alas, he never did make it, but he was one hell of a man. But on this day in 1988, Temple, ranked number one in the country, beat the Tar Heels, who were ranked number five, to keep that momentum rolling into the tournament. Uh, they were extremely hot. They, it was the only time they went into the tournament as the number one team in the country. Um, it might have been the only time they were a number one seed. I'll have to, to double check because I don't know what happened back in the 50s with Harry Litwack. But hopefully Castellanos does simplify things and gets back to the guy he was. Let's keep an eye on the Flyers. Anxious to see what the Eagles do at defensive coordinator. Uh, and shout out to the Philadelphia Stars for their contribution to the city of Philadelphia and the history of Negro League Baseball. Remember, life's too short. Go do something you love. Don't quit putting it off. You never know. And like I said, this could be a midlife crisis. And if it is, it is. Uh, I'm 44. So like I said, if I can get to 88, I'll take it. But go have yourselves a Tuesday, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.